What's up, guys? We're here from Team Elite Savage, and today we have a uh, new Sky Striker update uh, deck profile with the Enforcer package. I finally got my hands on it. Thanks to shout out to uh, Team Captain Eddie over here. He let me borrow the cards. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, the deck just runs so much better with it. Uh, still loses to IO, but that's okay. I got IO like five times today. It's not even funny. Uh, but no, the deck's real strong, it's real fluent now. If you open up like basically any Sky Striker monster, a Fusion Destiny, and Tikaboo, it's game over. They can't do anything about it, and it's just the deck has been a lot more consistent now, and it just flows a lot better. So, anyways, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, quick shout out to Eddie, shout out to Elmer for letting me borrow the access code, shout out to uh, Team Elite Beach, you guys are the homies, and uh, let's get right on to it. All right, guys, so I mean, for the Sky Striker engine, it's pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, we play uh, three Ray, Ray is Bay. Two uh, rows, uh, just five is great. Uh, I, just, I was testing this for uh, at three for a long time. I didn't really like it. Um, so I'm just see it nice. too much or what? So I, I still didn't see it enough. <laughs> but like now with the enforcer package, it's actually you have more ways with starters. So like that, that includes the like the fusion destiny package and stuff. But for the one ofs, you know, obviously you have uh, engaged insane. Uh, this card ever came back to back two. Three. I wish, man. Uh, you have Warner Jones, multi roll. If anything, I think multi roll is going to come back to maybe more than one. I only play a one area zero just because uh, sometimes I feel kind of like a dead card. Uh, a lot of times going second or even on game three, uh, not, uh, games two or games three, sometimes I'll actually side these out because they kind of conflict with each other. Sometimes I'll just leave this one in. Uh, it kind of just feels on the matchup and uh, who I'm playing against and what they're playing. And then for the last few one ofs, it's Eagle Booster and Afterburners. For the other Sky Striker spells, the only last three is the three Widow Anchor and then the two Shark Cannon. So pretty standard setup. You know, I see uh, sometimes I play more than one Afterburners, sometimes I play two. Uh, I don't really think, oh yeah, shout out to Liz Lee for uh, doing a trade on that. It's an original Mandela Palm Field Center. It's awesome. I love it. It's super sleek. It's not too crazy. And uh, but anyways, uh, Eagle Booster at one. Sometimes I even cut it going in sec uh, games two or three just because it's not that great to draw. But this has won me games before when I just try to go for Verde, pay cost, I try to ash it, or you not know, ash it, uh, Imperm or Valor it, and this just saves it. So that's enough for the Sky Striker cards. Uh, for the rest of the deck, we have some pretty cool stuff that I really, really like with it. Um, obviously, next part, we're actually going to be playing the, uh, the Fusion Destiny package. You know, uh, now with the Fusion Enforcer, this deck is kind of crazy. Uh, this is literally a, a draw, too. This is also still a cool effect. So a lot of people forget this effect, where it's like during the draw phase, if you see a, sp a monster, you can special summon it. And uh, in situations where you kind of want more board presence to kind of go for a game, or even like hard make an access code, then this is great. This, I love it because it doesn't lock you out like Red Ice Fusion does. Uh, and there's just the- It does lock you out. Hmm? Does lock no, it does lock you out, but I'm saying like you can uh, special summon uh, Yeah, it. and then do this after. And yeah, that's what I'm yes. saying. So like if you end the combo with this, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty awesome because sometimes, you know, if I open engage, I'll go engage, they'll ash it, whatever. Well, now I have this to resolve. Celestial's great. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten Celestial's effect, uh, but I have like have it ingrained in my brain now to like never forget it because this thing has won me so many games. I've drawn engage off of this and a hand trap, two hand traps, it's over. Uh, I actually drew off a, a hand trap and a Tikaboo earlier and uh, that definitely won me a game. Uh, and now for the hand traps, uh, right now I'm currently only playing nine because I'm playing a little bit more like engine support cards. Or, uh, and so this is gonna be three Valor, three Ash, and uh, three Imperm. Standard. No, it's pretty standard. Yeah. Uh, these two are the best ones, obviously. Uh, again, Sword Soul is the only things that really kind of help hinder them at some points. Uh, Ash is good because it's just, you know, it, it's good against the Mirror Match when they go engage or just because when they really go Fusion Destiny, you can just Ash it. And it's, uh, that's really kind of the only reason. This sometimes often gets sided out depending on the matchup, but right now, three's great. I normally always see at least one uh, for going second or games two or three. If I need more, I'll put three more, sometimes even more depending on the matchup. Yeah. But these are great. Wouldn't change anything about them. Uh, just because at least for the blind, sec uh, blind first, then it's fine. And now for the rest of the deck, it's really just going to be about like engine uh, uh, support cards. Now, uh, I keep going back and forth. Uh, Prosperity is really good in this deck. Um, for the longest time, uh, even before I got the Infusion, pa uh, Infusion Enforcer package, I was playing Desires. Desires was great, but I always banished everything. This is really good. Um, the way that I see it, it lets you dig for cards, but you don't have to use it, right? It's like a talent that's dead in your hands. 
So in the in the end, you can use it once for three or once for six, maybe even twice for three. Uh, and if I'm using this, it means I have no other way of getting out of it. Or sometimes I really am just baiting out the ash, but this thing is a really great card. I've seen Engage off of it, I've seen Tikaboo off of it. And like that alone is enough reason to want to play it. Uh, and also it's easy side out cards. Uh, I was playing Droplets before this and I tried Talents. Talents was really great, but like I said, if they don't activate nothing, it becomes super dead. At that point, I'd rather have Prosperity, so at least where if I go first, or if I have kind of like a bricky hand, I could search for uh, something else. So this has just gotten me out of a lot of trouble before. Uh, and I don't play Upstart in this deck because it conflicts with this. I've actually, that's one of the first times I've ever played it together. I, I hard drew Prosperity and Upstart. And then one time I went Upstart into Prosperity, and I was like, what was the point? Uh, for the rest of the cards, I played the One Mystic Mine. Um, I stand by with this card. Uh, I hate it, but I like it at one. Because um, you can search for it with, you know, obviously, terraforming. Uh, I don't like sitting on this card for too long just because it's it's not how I want to win, but it's also so most of the time, especially this format, a lot of people are having a lot of back row hate. Like a lot of decks are maining IO, Drytron, Tribrigade, obviously, Lyrilis, they're all maining IO, even Sword Souls maining IO. So that's kind of the reason why I use it, just to kind of stop for a couple of turns, just to kind of help me get a little bit more board presence. Of course, the one called by the grave. If you open it, it's insane. Uh, and then the one Rota. Nothing I would change here. Um, sometimes, like I said, Prosperity, I set it out to like maybe two. Sometimes maybe even uh, I only leave the one in there, depending on the matchup. And the last three cards of the deck, which is probably like the game stealers, is definitely gonna be there can only be one. Now, uh, this this card wins. If you go first and you're, into, if you're able to resolve that, then it, it's on, all against almost all of these decks right now. It's just a modic, automatic win. So, it's great. I love it. And uh, that's it for the main deck. Clean 40. As you should only play 40 in Striker. Any play, time playing more than 40, I don't think it's really that good of an idea. Um, but for now, we're going to go for the uh, extra deck. We have the one Sky Striker uh, token. And uh, for the monsters, I'm playing currently, I'm playing three Kigari. Uh, I like the new art. It's, in my opinion, I just like the way it looks. It's better. Uh, three Shizuku, obviously. Uh, these always have to be at maximized at three. Because these, if anything, these are the main ones that you ever want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Hayate is at two right now. Uh, I like it. I like running it at two. Sometimes if I hard open mine against a really big board, I just mine in Hayate and just keep going. I've done that before, and uh, it works out great. Uh, for the only other two Sky Striker monsters, uh, Link monsters, I got uh, one Kaina and one Zeke. Now, normally for like Prosperity, what I'll do, depending on the hand, if I'm going first, I'll, I'll banish one Hayate, uh, probably the Kaina, and then like maybe, uh, usually maybe like a Needle Fiber or something else. Uh, but that's actually one of the teams I'm going to make. I'll get to it when I say it, when I get there. Uh, but this is all the Sky Striker links that we have. Uh, here's still hoping that we have, that we finally get a uh, Sky Striker uh, Light Link monster. That'd be really fun. Uh, obviously, we're playing Needle Fiber, Selene and the access code package um honestly i'm not sure if i'm going to keep these two i want to but uh, i think right now because of the overabundance of io coming around you kind of really need to see either nightmare unicorn or nightmare phoenix uh and that's kind of where i'm probably going to head up towards changing these two and then obviously the last two uh which like what makes the deck so great is verde and Phoenix Enforcer. This card just wins a lot of games. It establishes, it establishes so much presence on the board and just puts a lot of pressure and have, makes your opponent constantly think of ways to out it. But uh, yeah, that's it right now for the uh, extra deck. Clean 15. And then uh, just for the side deck, I think it's pretty standard right now. Uh, but this is how I like to run it, at least for the, my locals, because in my locals we see a lot of combo, a lot of uh, a lot of sword soul and things like that. So we got the three nib. And then we're going to see the three Lancia. And then the last of the three monsters is going to be the three token collectors. Uh, this card comes in clutch a lot. Uh, it helps out a lot against uh, Sword Soul, which right now, like I said, we're seeing a lot of it. Uh, but also it helps out a lot against uh, Infernobles, which uh, shout out to Rich, uh, best Infernoble player in town. He uh, this always comes in clutch against them. Yeah. So, uh, And then for the rest of the side, I just have the three twins and then the three uh, dimensional barriers. Um, this is really good. I was playing Sanctum before this, but uh, the D-Barrier is so much better because they can't ash it. Also, it doesn't trigger any sort of monster effects during like their main phase or anything like that for tactics. So, this is really good. Uh, you can use it more than once, which is really nice. So, great. This is what this is the side deck right now. Uh, I kind of want to put a little bit more back row hay. So, I thought about maybe cutting like one nib and like one Lancia. Like Lancia against like 
uh, flanderies, it just it just it just kills them. So, but yeah, that's the side deck. And uh, so yeah, well, that's how I like it right now. The deck's a lot of fun. Obviously, uh, IO is still a thing, but you know we take what we can. Uh, and if they do it, they they see it, they see it. Can't get mad at it. And uh, but the deck's a lot of fun. It's so much more consistent now. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna continue to play for at least a couple more weeks. Uh, maybe even take it to Vegas. We'll see. Uh, or we might be taking Dry Chun or Sword Soul or something like that. But the deck's a lot of fun. It feels a lot good, a lot better now to be able to have a little bit more consistency to it. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe and check out the other videos that we got. Thanks.